The Marshall Islands are among the nations of the Pacific facing the most severe threat from rising sea levels, with disappearing islands not just a possibility, but already a reality. So it was no surprise that when the Marshalls hosted the Pacific Islands Forum, that the issue of climate change would be front and centre. The meeting of leaders from 15 Pacific nations has agreed on a declaration on climate leadership to be presented to the United Nations later this month. Pacific correspondent Sean Dorney was at the forum and filed this report. Tiny islands surround the Majuro Lagoon and one that belonged to the Marshall Islands ambassador to the United Nations is no longer there. In the last 15 to 20 years, it just eroded and slowly melted into the sea. It's not there anymore. As you can see, there's a few boulders marked the area where it used to be, but it's no longer there. As host to this year's Pacific Islands Forum, the Marshall Islands wanted to show climate change experts the very real effects of climate change, effects that can already be seen in the Marshalls. In this case, an island that's disappeared. Here, climate change has arrived, and we want to make sure that what we need to do in the next five years is done in order that what we fear in 50 years does not. The theme the Marshall Islands chose for this year's Pacific Islands Forum was marshalling the Pacific response to climate change. And a defiant president told the opening ceremony he was prepared to drown rather than become a climate refugee. My land is my home, my heritage and my identities, identity in ways that the English language cannot capture. This is my country and I will always stay here. If water comes, it comes. The day before the forum officially began, the Marshall Islands government hosted a day-long session on climate issues that brought together a panel of international experts. The American Secretary of State delivered a video message. My friends, the science is clear. It is irrefutable and it is alarming. If we continue down our current path, the impacts of climate change will only get worse. Without strong and immediate action, we can all expect new threats to critical infrastructure, regional stability, public health, economic vitality, and in some cases, even long-term viability of states. One of those states in danger of disappearing is Tuvalu. In spite of the many chances of financing, we haven't seen any major adaptation projects on the ground to work to building the resilience of communities. The following day, when the Marshall Islands Climate Change Minister, Senator de Brum, took the international climate experts out into the lagoon to see the impacts for themselves, the talk was all about how the leaders had contributed to the discussion and asked the panel powerful questions. Um, it's very clear they're passionate that they're fighting for the survival of their countries and that they're impatient with, you know, waiting for people to actually listen to them and to take action or sufficient action that will actually make the difference between life or death for these islands. Uh, I found that very moving. It's when you come to these coral atoll nations like the Marshall Islands or Kiribati or Tuvalu that you realise just how precarious life is. This barrier behind me has been built up simply with coconut fronds. It's very sad, especially if you see it happen. If an atoll island country does disappear, does it remain a nation? I put that question to one of the experts, a professor from the Columbia Law School. We've studied that and we've concluded that under international law, as long as there is some land remaining, even if it's protected by a seawall or has had to be built up, and if you have a, uh, some population there living, let's say, about 50 people, you can still be considered a state. You need to have a government, but it can be a government in exile. As long as you have some land and some population, you are probably still a state entitled to sovereign rights. Like the Marshalls, Kiribati has an uncertain long-term future. 
But the president of Kiribati is looking at alternatives. I've been talking to the Japanese and they were talking about a, um, a floating island. It's worth $2 billion. It will accommodate something like 30,000 people for the next 100 years. But we are looking at all of these options. I had the visit from uh, the, one of the largest corporations in Japan who are interested in doing this. Um, something like um, an oil rig, okay? But it's just be a floating city. The leaders adopted the Majuro Declaration, which calls on them all to show leadership on climate change issues, to mobilise the international community to demand greater action by the biggest emitters of greenhouse gases, and to take action in their own countries to switch to alternative energy. We have got to do things that are uh, within our own uh, capabilities domestically uh, in order to adapt to climate change and we have to better engage and improve our partnership with the, uh, the developed countries uh, and donor partners. But in the end, uh, what needs to be done is very clear. We must cut down on the emissions that is being produced. Palau's president, Tommy Rumengasau, will host next year's forum meeting. This is an issue of uh, our very own survival and our sustainability as, as a people and as uh, small island nations here. When a bridge like this is one of the highest points in the nation, it is no wonder the Marshall Islands wanted to focus on climate change and the threat of rising sea levels. <laughs>